Hi, my name is Dave Philhauer. I'm the principal at Two Rivers Middle School. So it's my third year as principal here. I spent 10 years at a sister school up in Columbia Heights. And the middle school was four years old. So I've been here just about since the beginning. Uh, the vision I have for middle schoolers is that they become active participants in their education. They need to have the basic skills and knowledge, but then use it for good. What am I really trying to do with this information? Am I making a science experiment? Am I talking to a community member? Am I trying to answer a difficult question? So active participants who know something and then use it for the good of the world. So 69% of our students are proficient in both reading and math. We've made a lot of growth in the past few years. Why are they proficient? Great teaching, great parents, great kids. I am definitely personally responsible for the academic growth of every student here. The teachers do the teaching. My dean of students has a role. The, the director of student supports has a role. But ultimately, I'm the principal. I'm in charge of everything. It's like being a conductor of an orchestra. People do different things, but I'm conducting the show. So we have high academic expectations for our students. Ultimately, my expectation is that they're ready for high school, to attend great high schools. Each day, students need to work. They need to work hard, they need to think hard, they need to come prepared to class with their homework, pencils, paper, and then in class, they need to be actively participating in the lesson. I think middle school is when we teach them all those skills. You know some stuff, but middle schoolers don't naturally work hard unless you push them, engage them, make sure that there are positive consequences for working hard, successes, and negative consequences if they don't do their work, because kids need to work hard. I believe that students have to work hard to achieve. Effort matters. We're all born with innate abilities, but unless you work hard to cultivate those abilities, you won't achieve. So all of our students come in with a mixture of innate abilities, and through hard work, through getting feedback from teachers, through taking active participation in their learning, that's how you achieve. Nobody just achieves with no effort. So we have many measures to keep track of students' academic achievement. We have uh, several tests during the year they take that are independent of their classes. So they come in the school year, they take the MAP test in fall and spring to see their growth over time. They take four predictors for the DC CAS, the ANET test, to see how they're doing on the DC skills. Teachers have data days, and this is also how I evaluate teachers. We use data days to see how students are doing, how we need to teach, accelerate, or remediate them. And then they're just good old-fashioned quizzes, projects, essays, presentations in class for the material. Whether it's a science lab, or a language arts debate, or a math test. You have class assessments, and then we have a greater assessment architecture using ANET and MAP. Our basic behavioral expectation is that you work hard it's connected to the academic expectation. In order to work hard, you have to do a lot of other behaviors that have to be taught if you don't know them. How do I pay attention as an expectation? How do I respond to adults? All teenagers have trouble with that. So we sweat the details here. How we speak to adults? Are we engaged in class? Are we ready for class? Are we on time for class? By sweating the small things and demanding a high level of work, we rarely have large behavioral problems. So we enforce rules in a variety of ways. First and foremost, the rules have to support academic achievement. It's all about student learning. If a student is distracting the class, my dean or I carry a walkie-talkie, we have an electronic referral system, we pull the student out. We quickly counsel with them, talk to them what was going on. Our goal is to get a student back in class as soon as possible. If it's a larger rule they've broken, there may be a larger consequence. The first step though is to get the student out of class so that everyone else can keep learning, look at the student's behavioral record, see is this a pattern, and then we have to work with the parents. Nothing works without the parents. So behavior is normally rewarded by the normal things you get. Unlike many middle schools, we have recess. We have a family-style lunch. 
You get to eat with your friends. You get to play with your friends. That's a normal reward. If you're not well behaved, you don't get those things. We also have spirit days like many schools. We have Friday community meeting. We have honor roll certificates. But these are all normal. We don't, kids like being here. It's a fun school. So basically, enjoy the school. Enjoy recess. Enjoy PE. Enjoy eating lunch with your friends. If you've had a behavioral problem, those logically might be taken away for a day. I wholeheartedly believe that my primary job is the professional development of my teachers. My Dean of Students and Families has other roles that frees me up to spend about 25% of my week planning and delivering professional development for the staff. Every Wednesday, the students dismiss at 1.15 to our YMCA program. Half go to the YMCA downtown, half have YMCA activities here, so that my staff can meet as a whole with the elementary school, across, with the elementary school staff across the street for professional development. There's a variety of professional development activities. One in every four or six sessions is a data day, using the assessment that we've looked at to see what do students need, who needs acceleration, who needs remediation. At the same time, we also tackle topics like the workshop model. How do I run a classroom that has a variety of activities going on so that students can get just what they need? We also prepare for conferences. Next week is student family conferences. Students are presenting. How am I gonna prepare my crew for conferences? When you've got every Wednesday from 2 to 5 o'clock through a whole year, you can develop your staff from good teachers to great teachers. And that's all we have here, the great teachers. As a charter school, we have to recruit and hire our staff kind of through our own private means. So we advertise, we post the jobs on a variety of websites, and then we go through a three-step process for new candidates. We first have a phone interview, because you have to be both an excellent urban teacher and a project-based teacher to, to make it here. Some people don't have both. If you make it through the phone interview, then we bring you in in person for a kind of administrative interview and a writing sample. If that all looks good, the third step is a model lesson, meet with the students, meet with the staff. So it ends up being about a nine hour interview process because we only want the best here. So I evaluate and hold my teachers accountable for student growth through a variety of means. Weekly walkthroughs give me a great sense of whether the teacher is engaging their students. If students aren't engaged, then you're not gonna be able to deliver a transfer of knowledge. I want all the students engaged in the learning, and then I want to see our small groups being pulled, our kids being accelerated or remediated. Then we can look at the data. So we have the data days through professional development. Is each student making progress? Who's not making progress? What are we doing? Thirdly, in the fall, winter, and spring, I have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the staff to set professional goals. Some I choose that we will run multiple groups in each class. And some they might choose. I want to learn more about teaching Spanish through technology. And I monitor those through our meetings. It's a small staff. I choose a small school. We only have the best here. And if towards the end of a year a teacher's not making progress, we let them know. And we might end up letting them go. So we keep the best and we wish everyone best of luck. But if you're not making it here, we're very honest with people. So we engage parents in a variety of ways. One, we're available in the morning and afternoons. Uh, I sit in the lobby in the morning, my dean sits in the afternoon. That's the easiest way for parents to talk to us. Secondly, the front desk, that's like the, the heart of the school. Parents come and drop off lunch, we come pick up lunch. I carry a walkie-talkie if a parent wants to see me. So for little things, we just talk to them then. We schedule parent meetings at the first sign of concern. Since we have so much data, we triangulate it. There's generally a few students that we're concerned about. So we call a parent meeting, the student support team, and we engage them. What works for your kid? What's the history? We also have a very different kind of parent conference. We have student-led conferences in February and June. We end up having about 85% of our families come, which is much higher than most middle schools, because the student is presenting his or her portfolio. They're showing the work to the families. They're explaining the work. Next Wednesday in November, they're showing the families their map data. Here's how I did on the standardized test. Here's what it means. We found that by having students present to the parents, it dramatically increases the number of parents that are coming into the conferences. So I'm available to talk to parents every day. My primary job is parents and teachers 
and then teachers teach the students. I'm in the lobby in the morning, I've got a walkie-talkie on, I'm very email accessible. Two people might call a parent. Might be me, might be my dean of family and students, and we meet and consult every day. We want to know, did the kid get home safe on time? We want to know, do they need a new uniform? We have to know the little things, otherwise it comes out in the classroom and the kids can't focus on learning. So I'm available every day for parents.